In this video, we're going to be learning how to build your own custom sidebar using React and Tailwind in a very simple way. So here, as you can see, we have the dashboard UI when we have the sidebar on the left and then the main content on the right side. Now, when I close the dashboard, you can see that obviously the main content spreads and takes the entire left out space. And then also the sidebar basically shrinks the size. And here, as you can see, we have only the icons getting shown. Now, when I click again, it spreads smoothly. And then obviously the main content shrinks size. And here, as you can see, we have these items on clicking on any of the one you see the drop down menu. You can click on the messages. It will show you if you have any message. Also for the settings, you have these. So yeah, this is what we're gonna be building in this video. The source code is in the description so you guys can go check it out, download it and use it for your own need. So yeah, without any delay, let's get started and let's learn how to build your own sidebar using React. <laughs> So this is the finished one. As you can see on the left, we have the sidebar and on the right, we have the main content. Now, obviously we have a div which holds both of them. Now, when we close the sidebar, automatically the space, this right div basically spreads itself and takes the left out space. So we're gonna be achieving that using the flex grow property. And if you look at the one that we have now, so in the app.jsx, we have a sidebar component and then the main main content component. Now this main content is obviously this one and the sidebar is basically this. Now, if you look at the one that we have now, here we only have the styles for the main content because uh, the sidebar we're gonna be building now. So as you can see here, we have two props. The first one is the state, basically, if the sidebar is open or not. And then we have the setup function which basically controls the on and off state, which is basically this is open. Now, these, uh, these are being passed from the parent, which is app.jsx, and it has this use state, which has is open and set is open. Now, initially, we want the sidebar to be shown, so we have this true. Now, if you look at the main content, we don't have much, and I think it's pretty simple uh, and obvious what we have here, so we don't need to look into what we have. And then, if you look, if you look at the sidebar, it's pretty empty. We just have the basic skeleton of the sidebar component. So what we're going to be doing is first, first we're going to be breaking down the props that we have. So we have the is open and set is open. And then we're going to be having an active state for the dropdown that is active. So if you look at the finished one, you see that when, so when I, when I click on any of the nav item, which has a dropdown, basically, you see the previous one, if there is any open, automatically closes. So basically we need to keep track of which dropdown is active and then also the setter function for that. And then we're gonna be basically mapping through an array of object which would have all the different nav items. Now, since we're using React, it would be pretty stupid if we hard code the nav items. So here I've added a variable which has the nav item so this is in this order so we have an object which has the title the icon and then if it has a drop down now if this doesn't have so it's going to have false and it would have no other key value pair so i just paste in the other stuff so if you have the drop down as true you would also have this drop down items which would be an array and this array has the drop down list which we're going to be mapping there. Now, in the div, the main div that we have for the sidebar, we're going to be adding the background, text, some transitions, text to small, and then a border. Let's save and let's look at the one that we have. So we don't have any change since it doesn't really have anything to show. But then if you look at here, you could see a thin line, which is basically the border of the sidebar. Then the next thing that we're going to be doing is here when so when the sidebar is open so what if this is true then we're going to set the width to 64 else we're going to have the width to 16. let's save now initially since the sidebar is open we're going to be seeing this but when this is sh when this is set as false we're going to be having the width to 16. so just to check it 
you can come here and let's add this as false. Let's save. And you can see the size has shrunk down. Now, the next thing that we're going to be doing is inside of this, we're going to have a div with some padding. We're going to be having justify as between items to center. And then we're going to be having the text, which has the dashboard. Let's save. Looks good. Now we're going to be having the icon or the button to toggle the states of the sidebar. So now first, if this text, so when this is closed, we don't want this text to be shown. So what we can do is if this is open, we're going to be setting the opacity as 100%. Basically, if this is true, then we want the dashboard text to be shown, else we want the opacity to be zero. And we're going to be having the button which would be res which would be responsible for having the on and off state of the sidebar. So it's going to be having this on click event. So when you click on the button, what we want to do is we want to set the set state as whatever the previous value of the is open is, you want to just have the opposite of that. So if you have this, uh, you have this is open to true and you click on this button, you want this to go false and so on and so forth. And then we're going to be having some style for the button. So we're going to be having some hover states, hover animation, uh, I mean, effect. This is open is true. You want to show the X icon, else you want to show the menu icon. Let's save. Looks good. Now, obviously, you might be thinking, um, how the hell is this thing taking up the entire space? So. Uh, I'll just show you. So there's one specific uh, CSS property known as flex grow. So if you have the parent as flex, then this flex one in tailwind, which is basically this, this property, it basically allows this container to take up the entire space that is left out. So this is responsible for taking up uh, the extra space using the snap tag class name. And then we're going to be mapping through this variable or the array of objects. Now for each nav item, we want to have a div with a key, and then we want to have an inner div with some padding, hover state, cursor to pointer, flex with item center and justify between, and then an on click. Now this on click is for the items. Now this would open or this would act only if if it has a drop down and if the sidebar is opened and if, all right, if these two are satisfied, only then you want to add this set active dropdown. Now, if I look, if I show you the finished one, as you can see, when we click onto any of the options or any of the sidebar, which uh, I mean the menu, which has a dropdown, you see that automatically the content or the drop down menu opens up. Now, if I were to click onto this home, which doesn't really have, it won't do anything. So for this to work, what you need to do is basically you check if it has a drop down and you would also need to check if the sidebar is open. Only if this is open, you want this to work. And then you set the active drop down. This is what this is doing. So if this is if this already has the same item title as this, then you want it to be set as null or basically empty string. And if this is not active, you want to set the item title as the um, I mean active dropdown. Once you have this done, you want to add the content main content inside of this with flex item item center, and then you set the icon of that and then you add some text for the text content with some of the CSS like white space no wrap overflow hidden some transitions and then here basically you check so if you look here when we close it we don't really show the text so here we basically check if it is if it is open then the width would be 32 with opacity 100 percent else the width would be zero the opacity would be zero so when closed, we don't really want to show the text. Let's save. Let's go to the one that we have here. So as you can see, when it closes, we don't show anything. And even these don't work because even though we're setting 
the active drop down state, but we're not really showing up the drop down menu. So let's just go here. Now, what we're going to be doing is now we're going to be showing the drop down menu. So, first, we're going to be having that anchor or the chevron icon. So, first, if this has a drop down and if this is open, then you want to show the chevron down icon. And also, we're going to be animating it. So, we're going to be having some transitions. And if the active drop down is equal to the item title of this, then the, then just rotate it to 180 degrees else keep it empty let's save so as you can see so this is the one that uh is active i'm clicking again just flips right all right so we're going to be basically checking if this has the drop down menu and if this is open and if the active dropdown is equal to the item title, if all these conditions are true, then we basically want a div with a different background with overflow hidden, some transitions, and then we want to map through the item dropdown items. And then we're going to grab each dropdown, build a new div with the key of the dropdown item, some CSS style, which include padding and some hover effects, and then the real drop down text. Let's save. Looks good. Yeah, that's it for this video. I hope this video was helpful. The source code will be in the description, so make sure to download that, play with it. Now, this is how you build a custom drop down. Now, obviously, this doesn't have any link or basically the routing, so which you can include. Now, as of now, I just wanted to show you how you would build your own sidebar using just React and Tailwind and by not using any other libraries like Shatsy and stuff. So yeah, that's it for this video. Hope this was helpful. Hope you learned how to build a sidebar using React. And yeah, meet you guys in the next video. Till then, bye-bye. Take care. See you next time.